Hey homeschool friends, welcome to the video. And so in today's video, I want to share more about the Abeka K4 program. There just really aren't that many videos on YouTube that kind of go through the K4 program. There are a lot of videos that go through the K5 program, which I have also used, but I have yet to use the K4 program, but I have picked it up for my twins for this upcoming school year. So in this video, I plan to go through the resources, like what came in the child kit, what came in the essential parent kit. I wanna go through how I organize some of these resources, because Abeka is a little overwhelming on all the resources and manipulatives, but I have found a good system, so I'm gonna share that with you. And in the process of sharing all that, I'll probably just chat through a bit of what I plan on using and what I don't necessarily plan on using, but I wanna show you everything that comes in the kits. So if that sounds at all interesting to you guys, please stay tuned. So hi, my name is Angie. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here or welcome back if you have been coming for a while. So like I said, this video is all things Abeka K4. So a little backstory on why I picked this program. So I initially picked this up like a year ago. I picked it up when my twins were three going on four. So they have a November birthday and so I picked it up with the intention of using it when they were three, almost four. But we didn't use it and it really comes down to the fact that I hold preschool very loosely. I really wanna follow their lead and see where they're at. And they just weren't ready last year, but they are more than ready this year. I feel like they are so excited. They keep taking their little books. So they have these little workbooks, which are their main workbook for the Abeka K4 program. And they just keep looking at them and counting things and laughing. And so they are just so excited to start. So I know that this year will be a better year for them. So basically they will be four going on five when we start and use the K4 program. And I'll hold that loosely again. So if say for instance, they're really into it, I have all the stuff for K5 because I just used it for my daughter and that is the plan for them going forward anyway. So I feel like I have myself covered there. But as for why I picked Abeka, so we have been through a number of phonics programs with my older children, my older being eight and seven, and we've landed on Abeka as just a really solid program that I have found easier to teach and that does a lot of hand-holding, has a lot of good manipulatives. My older kids have responded really well to it. And so I just wanted to continue on that line. I wanna start my twins a little earlier with K4. So I did not use K4 for either of my big kids, but I use K5 and grade one. So we are gonna dive into K4 this year. So I wanna show you all the stuff, all the resources. So I am gonna flip the camera around. I'm gonna flip the camera around and show you all the stuff that comes in the child kit as well as the parent essential kit. And so I will do that and then I'll chat through a little bit about what we're using or what I plan on using. So let's do that. Okay guys, so I made two stacks really. I made a child kit stack and a parent kit stack. And I'll start with the parents. So let me move these. So like I said before, this is called the Essentials Parent Kit. There is actually an Essentials Plus add-on kit where you can get a few other flashcards. And I actually do have those. Here they are. It's the one vowel word cards as well as the two vowel word cards. I have them. They're great resources. I do use them. I am not sure if I'm gonna use them for K4 specifically, but that is another thing you can pick up is some extra flashcards. But otherwise, this is what comes in the kit plus a bunch of these charts and games. There's actually four different charts and games and a lot of things that come with those, but I will be showing you those shortly when I show you a little bit about how I organize this stuff. So we'll get back to that. So I'm gonna start with the teacher's manual because I feel like this is kind of the basis of the program and I actually really like Abeka teacher's manuals. They always seem a bit thick. I mean, this is K4, that seems like a lot of stuff, but once you get used to it and once you get into it, it's very reasonable and it's easy to understand. So I flipped to a random lesson. It looks like about lesson 16 and I'm gonna go through what they tell you to do and show you that it is really basic and you probably can get through it fairly quickly. So it always starts with a phonics section. And so within the section though, they have a preparation, a procedure, and then an application section. And those are actually really helpful. So I always look at these preparation sections before I even get started. This is what you need to either write on the board or you might need to get out your manipulative. So it says letter, picture, flashcards, A, E, I, and U. And so you would get out your flashcards, which here are your letter, picture, flashcards. You would pull out all the different 
flashcards for A, E, I, and U, and then you'll be going through those. And then they also want you to pull out these flashcards, so they want you to get out the letter A for Lesson 16. And then they want you to get out the numbers, charts, and games, the old tree game, and so that would be this stuff. So you have the numbers, charts, and games section, and it came with a whole lot of other things, and I'm going to show you in just a second, but I just want to show you what they're kind of asking for. And then one of the papers in that packet is the old tree, or the old apple tree. And then it says you're going to be cutting some blossoms from construction paper, and you need to write a capital A on one, a lowercase a on some others, you can use sticky notes, you can use actual apple manipulatives, things like that. So they're just giving you this game which I really do like, and I use some of these things for K5, but I think they're gonna be perfect for K4. So those are part of the preparation for the day, and then it gets into the procedure. So first you're gonna warm up. So you're gonna take the letter A flashcard that you already picked out, and you're gonna say this. So what's in bold is usually what you say. It's like, today we are going to learn a new letter. This letter's name is A. There are two A's on this card, a capital A and a lowercase a, and it keeps going from there. And then you talk about, you teach the sound of A, so it says A has a sound that it makes. A says ah, ah, ah. And it says have the child repeat. And then it says there is a picture that can help us remember the sound of A makes. And you pull out the picture of the apple and you keep teaching through here with all the different flashcards that you have. And then here in step three is application where you pull out the old tree and you follow their little game and you keep learning about the letter sound A. So that is just an example. So that's a phonics lesson. I feel like that would probably take five minutes. Depends on how long you want to play with the Apple game. But if we turn the page and then look a little bit at this, you can do some phonics review. And I sometimes do this. And then it talks you through handwriting. So this is a fairly big section. And if you wanted to start out your K4 kids with handwriting, this is very well laid out. There's a lot of instruction. There's things to put on the board. There are things that you have them practice making large oval strokes. And then you draw the house, which I find these houses, I'll zoom in a little bit. I do find this house very useful teaching the kids where it gives you instructions where it says start on the red dot, curve down to the pink carpet, slant up to the red dot, slant down to the same line to the pink carpet, and smile. So it gives great instruction. And within this book, this main book, it teaches the cursive section. So you can choose cursive or manuscript for your K4 student. If you happen to want to teach manuscript, they will send you an additional lesson plans for manuscript writing. And then you would say go to lesson 16, because that's the one we're doing. And then you can see here on lesson 16, it teaches how to write the manuscript A again using that house description. So a lot of this stuff is written on the board, practiced on the board, and then it will tell you where you can find the practice sheet for them to work on. So that's handwriting and then there's numbers. So there's really three main sections, phonics, handwriting, numbers, and then it goes through here and you can pull out some number concept flashcards. They're working on one through four. Again, you have preparation procedure, Oh, they don't have application, but you're basically your procedure is your application. And in this case, you're playing this game where it's play hide and seek and you hide different numbers and have the child find the numbers one through four. So it's just like there is a lot of hands on fun things going on here. And I feel like they're very flexible and adjustable. So if you feel like you don't quite want to do this full on game, you can adjust it for your time and your kids. And then I flipped back a little further. So I'm on 96 and you can see here some phonics, some handwriting and some numbers. And in this case, there's a little numbers review. So it's very similar in its structure. And then you just have a lot of these different manipulatives to teach the concepts well. And in my opinion, I really like that. I like having more. I like that it's all ready for me. I don't have to make it and things like that. So that is really what a lesson looks like in the K4 lesson plans from Abeka. So let's move on a bit. So I am briefly just gonna show you some of the flashcards and manipulatives you will get in the essentials parent kit. I've already showed you a little bit of the letter flashcards. They'll tell you when to pull these out and when to use the ones with the pictures versus the uppercase and lowercase. And then they have these blend cards. Okay, this is probably one of my favorite parts about Abeka is how they teach to blend. And this was one of the things that initially drew me to Abeka for my seven-year-old is she was struggling blending and I just like the way Abeka teaches blending. So in the beginning, when you have your K4, K5 program, you're gonna be using a lot of the blend A cards. And in this case, it just gives a consonant, a vowel, 
blend and then you will either have a short or a long sound and you'll see when I pull one of these out it's short on one side long on the other and it will tell you when to pull these out which ones to practice and you'll kind of flip through them they'll get used to seeing the the short vowel sound and they'll say ma they'll just get used to doing that quickly and it will really help when you start to get to more like CVC words and further into the program. So those are the main flashcards that come. And I said you can also get the add-ons where you get the one vowel cards and the two vowel cards. What I forgot, I was about to move on, but I'm not going to. I'm going to show you the charts and games. This is such a large part of the program. So I have mine in file folders. And I have already gone through these programs because they'll come shrink-wrapped like this phonics charts and games with all of these different pages. And what I did is I laminated all of the pages. So I laminated like this one, for instance, is chart 3, 3A and 3B, which you would lay out like this for the kids. And then there's a lot of times where you, you'll be instructed to play the old McDonald had a farm game. And whatever they're having you practice, it might be short and long vowel sounds. It might be actually reading some words or anything like that. Then they'll have all of these little farm animals. And what these did is they came in a sheet that you could punch out. And what I did is I punched them all out and then I laid them on a laminated sheet and I cut around them just so that the lamination would stay better. But my seven-year-old, she was six when she did K-5, she loved these. She got to put on the animals and I think my twins are gonna love them even more because she kind of aged out of stuff like this, but I think they're gonna really like it. So there's all these sorts of games and so that's what you end up doing is there is a lot of preparation for this ahead of time but it's so worth it because then you have all these games and game pieces all ready to go and then it ends up being very hands-on and tactile for the kids there are also these charts vowel charts consonant charts and they will instruct you when to pull these out in the program so that was the phonics charts and games and this is the numbers charts and games gave you the example of the apple tree and then they have so much stuff to punch out. Some of this I haven't punched out, so this is a good example of showing you how things get, like you punch out this card, and then I laminated it from there. And they have so much stuff, so lots of calendar work, and things like that. Oh my gosh, there's so much stuff. And so that's the numbers one. And then here's learning games. We use this a ton. I feel like this is the one I use probably the most, where we would have lots of manipulatives like Peter Rabbit, Noah's Ark, bees and beehives, doghouse. My daughter probably loved this one the most though. I'm gonna get this out. This one, where there was like a bear and clothes and they got to dress the bears. I don't know if my twins will love it as much, probably. It's pretty fun. So that's part of the learning games. And then the last one is the number concept flashcards. Actually, this probably isn't so much a learning game. So there's a few in here. The bigger theme for this, these are actually more useful for, as flashcards, and I just need to cut them apart, I'm pretty sure. And so these are flashcards where they can count the numbers on the back, and it starts really simple. And then it gets to 20. So 1 to 20, I need to cut out those flashcards, I just realized that, because I didn't really use the, the numbers part with my daughter for K5, we just used Saxon, but I am planning on using the numbers part for K4. So I need to get this a little bit more prepped. But you can see how much comes with this program. Like you don't have to Pinterest anything. You don't have to think of separate games of how to teach the letters. It is all here and it is all instructed for you. And I love that. So that was all the teacher resources, all the teacher kit. Now I'm gonna show you what comes in the child kit. And these are exciting resources as well. So we have readers. I have two because I have twins, but you will only get one in the kit but this is the one i wanted them to have their own copies of because this is the main workbook because this is for phonics and numbers so they get to work on different things and so it starts out really simple where they're coloring and counting and then it also moves into circling letter sounds which like circle the picture which begins with that consonant sound and then it moves on to practice writing some of the numbers here you're drawing a line to the correct picture. They're actually reading the word hug. And it's just really fun. And things like this where you say the name and then pick which blend it is, which beginning blend. I 
just love it. My twins have been playing with these books. They're already a little bit beat up because they have been wanting to play with them all summer long and I've been like, just don't write in them. They're for preschool and they're just so excited, especially stuff like this. So I forgot to show you this, where there's three different numbers and they count and my son will be like, one, two, it's like, no, mommy, that's not right. It's not three. And I was like, I know, which one is it? And so he's already very much capable of some of these things. So we will see. Maybe they're going to be going faster through this program, but I'm not sure. I'm just going to follow their lead, like I said. And then there are two other workbooks here. And these are the ones I'm probably not going to use. And this is the section of program I am not going to use. So I showed you there's a phonics, handwriting, and numbers section in the K4 teacher's manual. The handwriting, I'm just not gonna use. I really like the Danelian style handwriting. I'll put a link up for the video I made on the Danelian handwriting. I just really like it. And I'm just not gonna mess around with this this year. I still think they're so young and I don't wanna push handwriting on them too early when maybe their gross motor skills aren't quite ready. But here are the resources and I'll flip through them just in case you are interested or you have an older kid or maybe you just wanna see how they would do. These are very cute, very colorful. Again, I picked up the manuscript handwriting program, and then this is the writing tablet, and this is just more, more practice writing and circling. This has a little bit of phonics, I believe, in it as well, where they practice some other things that they are learning. So that's what the tablet looks like. I probably won't be using those, but they're very good resources. And then the last thing I want to show you are these little books. So the program comes with two books, and I think you start here with little books and then go to these Animal Friends ones, but I'm not sure. They're labeled one through 12. So let me show you what one looks like. So one looks like going through the letters. So we're not reading a book here, but they are identifying the vowels in this one. And then I'll pick one from the middle, so like five. So here we're starting to do some blending and some CVC words with a couple designated consonants. And then hey, for like the last one, it's definitely getting into even little sentences. So these are just really cute, really colorful. They are paper, so they're a little bit more flimsy, but I just don't feel like you're gonna use them for too long, that they shouldn't get too beat up. But they are definitely something that you can go back to again and again, or that's at least what we have done with our K-5 readers. And then these, these are the animal friend ones. And we'll start with the first one and this, yeah, these are the second set of books because you can see here we're getting into sentences and then by the end of it, book eight, you have two lines on a page, three lines on a page. So they definitely progress pretty quickly in the K-4 program to reading some sentences. I think my twins are just going to love this. They're going to be so proud of themselves for learning how to read using this program. So those are the resources. But the last thing I wanted to show you was how I store all of these resources. So I'm going to take you on a little tour of our homeschool room. But you can see here that I use this hutch area for a lot of our storage. And it's perfect. It has this long drawer where I store a lot of our boxes of flashcards. And I have found that these boxes are really pretty sturdy cardboard. They're easy for storing. I have just left them in the cardboard. Then you can see I keep the file folders underneath um, within this door. And why I like this is because it keeps it very, very accessible for me. So when I am pulling stuff up for the day, I'm able to grab the games or grab the charts or grab which flashcards I need. And it's all here in one area. Okay guys, so I flipped the camera back around and that is really all I have for the video. I hope it was helpful to see what comes in both of those kits, the child kit and the essential parent kit. I hope it was helpful to see how I organize it a bit since I've had these resources for a while. I've had time to think about what I want to do, like laminating and cutting them out and organizing them. So I hope that was helpful. And I would love to know down below, have you, one, used the K4 program and did you like it? Or are you looking into using it? Because I really didn't feel there were that many videos on the Abeka K4 program. And so I hope this is helpful to you guys. I hope seeing what comes in it and getting a, a better feel for the program helps you decide if it is a good fit for you and your family. So if you like these kind of flip through resource videos, give the video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. It really helps me out. And otherwise I will see you in the next homeschool video. All right guys, take care.